Greetings folks, in this video I'll show you how to set up the ZOHD co-pilot in the beautiful little uh, drift motor glider. It has a special spot for it in here and you just use the double sided tape to stick the co-pilot in. Make sure you have the arrow pointing towards the nose, it has to go that way. Little GPS unit I have sitting up in the uh, little cover there, make sure you have that facing the correct way up. Antenna has to face up, not the uh, not the writing side, and the cable just passes through the little hole in the bottom and plugs into the GPS socket there. I have the setup pad plugged into the settings uh, socket there. I'm going to be connecting via S bus, so you would connect your receiver to these S bus pins here. I have been using uh, an FR Sky X4R. And that's absolutely fine, but uh, I might now try something smaller like the uh, XM Plus or even for even more range, something like the RX6R. If you don't have an S bus capable receiver and setup, like if you have uh, Spectrum or something like that, you can connect via PWM uh, with the other supplied PWM cable and they plug into this socket here, PWM. I strongly recommend you download and print the, the manual from the ZOHD website. Everything you need to know is in here. So I have all the cables coming up here. This is the, the elevator. So that will go into the elevator slot. There like that. Make sure the polarity is correct with the ground wire facing the back. Ailerons. And the ESC or throttle. Plugs into the throttle, obviously. And the S bus receiver will go underneath, but that plugs into the S bus socket. So now we can set up the transmitter. And this is what I came up with. Oh, we don't need the rudder, I can get rid of that. So You'll need to reduce the rates because the throws on the little drift are excessive at 100%. So 50% aileron, 50% elevator, 100% throttle and uh, mode switch on channel 5 as well. If you connect it by S bus, you also have the option of using channel 6. That's the auxiliary pins on the co-pilot. You can use that for a panning camera or flaps or something like that. Now at this stage, we don't worry about plus or minus uh, for the aileron or elevator, we'll work that out later on. We have to sort of sort out the direction of stabilisation first before we do that. So don't worry if the control surfaces are going in the wrong direction at this stage. Make sure your receiver is bound and uh, working properly with your transmitter. GPS is connected, setup pad is connected, so let's turn the power on. It'll do a little level calibration, two lights on. There we go, so that's sort of done this little level calibration. We see a red flashing light here, which means the GPS is connected but hasn't found satellites yet. And that beep will keep going until it's uh, satellite locked as well, which is very annoying and stressful while you're trying to set it up. So now we can check out the modes. And you have to be aware that minus 100 is return to home, zero is manual, and plus 100 is stabilized mode. So on my Tyrannus, that is switch in the up position is return to home flashing green light there, middle is manual, no green lights, and down is stabilised, a solid green light. You may want to sort of remap those switch positions. I would actually prefer manual up the top, stabilise in the middle, and return to home down the bottom. But that's up to you. So if we watch these two little uh, green LEDs here, this tells us which style of plane we've selected. And remember, the co-pilot does all the mixing for different sorts of planes, not your radio. So push the set button for a second to change between the different uh, plane types. LED 1 on is VTAIL. 1 and 2 on is Delta Wing. Just 2 on is the T-tail, which is what we need for the drift. So that, that looks like it's working okay. The first thing you can calibrate is the uh, calibrate your radio, as they say in the instructions. 
In stabilised mode, we just need to hold the set button down for three seconds. Let go. Ailerons will do a little wiggle and uh, your radio is calibrated, whatever that means. Ah, oh, there we go. I just found out what it is. If you find when you're in manual mode you need to, to trim the plane to get it to fly level, you can redo this radio calibration and that will sort of calibrate the stabilised modes to be the same trim. So now we can check out the direction of stabilisation. In stabilised mode, if I lift this wing up, the control surface should come up like that. So that's the correct direction. Elevator the same. Yes, that's going up too. So the stabilisation is working in the correct direction. If it wasn't, you would need to change the direction of the pot. In fact, let's do that. So now we've got the ailerons working the wrong way. If I lift the wing up, see that aileron goes down, which is the wrong way. So, so straight up and down is sort of in the middle. And then you've got left side or right side. What do we need? We need it turned around to the left side. We're anti-clockwise. And anywhere from the sort of up and down position right around to uh, all the way anti-clockwise uh, gives you more or less stabilisation effect. So I would have it sort of uh, horizontal like that. Return to home and uh, radius or fence. If you have it all the way around to clockwise, that's return to home. Anything other than all the way around to clockwise is sort of fence mode where it will fly out to a certain distance depending on where you have this pot uh, and go no further in once it hits the the fence the geo fence it'll go into return to home and come back to you but i prefer to just have it on return to home like that so now we have the stabilization going in the correct direction but the sticks are going in the wrong direction no they're going in the right direction oh the elevator is going in the wrong direction so I need to reverse the elevator to get it working in the correct direction. It's on 50 at the moment, so I'll go down to minus 50. Or you can just reverse the elevator channel. Now the elevator is working in the correct direction according to the sticks and according to the stabilisation. So that is good to go. So now to work out the correct amount of stabilisation, uh, you need to go for a fly and see if it's wiggling too much. If it is wiggling too much and too aggressive in stabilisation, you can turn down the amount of stabilization. All right, so now we need to set up fail safe return to home. If you lose contact with your radio or the radio runs out of battery, which would be terrible, it will go into return to home mode and come back to you. Go to the fail safe setting. It will probably be set as not set, but you've got to change that to a custom setting. Go to custom set and uh, this shows the position of each channel. So what we do now is make sure we've selected the re return to home mode. That is with channel 5 at minus 100. Scroll down to channel 5. Push and hold the enter button. Scroll down to channel fail safe. And that will set channel 5 to minus 100 in a fail safe situation which is ex exactly what you want. You don't want to set any of the other channels, especially not the throttle, because uh, Copilot will take control of all the other channels. You just need to tell it that when it goes into fail safe, channel five has to be at minus 100. So now we can pull the little adjustment pad out. We don't need to keep that connected. And you should be ready to fly. Now there are a few things that may frustrate you while you're setting up. And probably the number one thing is uh, you need to calibrate the ESC. So to do that, have it in manual mode. Put the throttle up, connect it up. Just have to wait for a while. It's still starting up. So now we can put it down when we hear those two beeps and that's calibrated and it'll start up properly. Must be in manual mode. This is another thing you can't do any setup at all if you're in return to home mode. It just won't work. If you're in manual mode, 
the throttle will work. If you're in stabilised mode before there are enough satellites acquired, the throttle won't work or return to home. Another thing is if you have your transmitter too close to the receiver, uh, it can sort of put it into fail-safe mode, so just move it away a little bit. If you get a constant fast beeping from the ESC, then it means that your throttle isn't down low enough. And you may need to recalibrate the sticks on your radio by going into the radio menu and doing the calibration thing, or calibrating the ESC should fix that up as well. You may also have to reset your ESC back to the factory defaults. Uh, when I was mucking around trying to get the ESC brake on, I changed some other parameter. That's why you need to download the manual and look at the beepy beeps and find out what resets it to factory default. Uh, that's number nine in the sequence, which is a long beep and four short beeps. And then start again and you might have a, a better chance. The little drift ESC has a JST pigtail coming off there that you can power the little VC400 from. It's uh, important to note the co-pilot doesn't have an on-screen display at all. Anything you see on screen is coming from the camera. The co-pilot does a level calibration when it first starts up. That's when you'll see those two little lights, two little green lights come on. You can force it to do another level calibration using stick commands, but there's a catch. What you do is you hold the sticks down and in like that for five seconds and then the two green lights will come on again and it will do another level calibration. You have to make sure you don't have the throttle cut switch on if you have one. You have to make sure you have 100% throws on the first four channels and including a rudder channel. Even though you don't use a rudder, you need that rudder input to initiate the stabilization using stick commands. Now I found that 100% throws in manual mode is too much for the little drift so I would actually when you're all set up and ready to fly I would drop them down to 50 or so then it'll be easier to fly in manual mode and you'll still have enough control in stabilized mode so I have re reconfigured my mode switch so that I now have manual up the top stabilize in the middle and return to home down the bottom and I'll show you how I've done that So channel 5, we just set the source to max. Uh, for manual, the weight is 0, and I've made the switch up. For stabilise, the weight is 100, and switch in the middle. And for return to home, it's minus 100, and switch down. So source, max, weight, 0, 100, or minus 100, whatever you want, and switch position down here.